the world's most universally understood word. And it's coffee? I always thought it was the word no. Coffee is cafe in Spanish and Portugal, which means in all these Spanish and Portuguese speaking countries, it's going to be the same. And it's even recognizable between Italian, French, and German. And I think you can somewhat still make out this word even in these other parts of Europe. One of the only outliers here being Armenia, and then Ethiopia and Eritrea. Hawaii with Cope. We saw a similar map to this last week, this time in Germany. This is the German autocomplete, so why is country blank? I can actually do my own American version of this map by opening up Google. Why is Germany called Germany? Is that really? Man, what are we doing in the US? Now for the Germans autocomplete, when they type in why is Spain, it pops up to so popular, rip Portugal. Why is Italy so expensive? And they said the same thing actually about Belgium and Luxembourg. It looks like a lot of the times Germans are just curious why other countries aren't in the EU. I guess they want to expand everyone into the EU, even all the way at the edge of the continent. Wait, Germans want to know why Russia isn't in NATO? You know, funny story about that. They tried to join and we just didn't let them in. US and UK specifically were just not a fan. Well, so all these questions are about the EU though. Except for Poland, they got something different going on. I guess anything is better than getting these results. It looks like some of these city states like Andorra and the Vatican have to prove why they should be allowed to exist. Global wine consumption or who drinks the most wine starting in the 60s, I would think that Italy would be pretty far up there. It's the early 70s and they are number one, although they are now beginning to drop. Argentina briefly goes up, but they're gonna have to deal with that Falkland War and they might not be wanting to drink wine anymore after that. France is up. Oh, that's right. I forgot about France. Portugal, I didn't realize likes wine as much as they do. At least still in third place there, consistently in the top six. Why does this continue to go back and forth? This is just chaos. France has really pulled ahead though by 2010. And even Portugal is not going to be able to catch them, although it seems like Portugal has really big wine drinking years. They were close there, and by the end of the animation, we are filled with only European countries. I think Argentina was actually the only outlier this entire time. Spain used to be a bigger fan of wine back in the 80s. I don't know Chile was there as well. I guess I never considered that only specific parts of the world really enjoyed wine. Also, it was way more popular back in the day. This is by liters per person. I mean, there are multiple countries above 10, and if you skip to nowadays, no one is above 10. Even France is not even hitting 7. It actually stayed consistently high even through the 80s and then by the 90s is when things dropped off. I don't know why I kept expecting places like China or India to pop up, but I guess they're not big fans. In France, children were served wine at school. It wasn't until 1956 they got rid of this. Always remember what they took from you. That is so crazy. <laughs> Historical obesity rate by state. We're starting in the late 80s and you can see a lot of the states are still dark blue, which is only 0 to 9%. More states are beginning to get light blue by 1995. We're starting to get up to 15% of the population. Interesting that this part of the U.S. seems to have been kind of growing uh, larger with time. Oh, and yeah, see, there seems to be, it stems from the deep south somewhat, and then it will spread throughout. Let's see if anything goes down. I'm not sure. This is 2005. So we're having some states like West Virginia go up to 30 to 34%. And it's, again, it stems from here by 2010. A lot of the south Okay, so there are states that go into decline. West Virginia is now almost at 40%, and oh, we have Colorado doing okay at 20%. For a brief time, Mississippi was at an all-time high. Over 40% of their population was obese. How is Colorado doing it? They've been ahead of the curve for decades. What are they doing over there? And unfortunately, future projections don't make this look much better. Problem is, these places down here got the best food. That's the issue. I love me my southern food. Hawaii also has kind of been staying on top of it. Apparently, living at a higher altitude can help reduce obesity, which might explain Colorado with Denver. How far are you away from countries where Spanish is an official language? Or basically, how far are you away from any of these flags right here? Unsurprisingly, if you're in the Western Hemisphere, you are not far from Spanish. I know Brazil speaks Portuguese, but I thought maybe they'd have like a secondary official language with Spanish. I guess not. There's actually more English speakers than Spanish speakers, though, in Brazil. Of course, Spain had a few African colonies, so they still speak Spanish to this day. But outside of that, as you slowly go deeper into the Eastern Hemisphere, you're not going to see much of this language. This part of Indonesia is the best spot to go to if you're trying to get as far away from those Duolingo notifications. Spanish or Vanish. I actually thought the Philippines might have Spanish as an official language. It was an official language there for three centuries, but I guess they decided to get rid of that. Less than half a million people still speak it today, even though it was still official all the way in 1987. Why you deserve a four-day work week. It was just declared an overwhelming success in Iceland. 1% of all workers were included and productivity improved or stayed the same. Trials gave workers the same pay for reduced hours. Companies will have improved engagement, improved health, 
growth and improved innovation, while reduction of overhead is decreased and reduced inefficiency and emissions. I mean, I know in the US there are a lot of holidays that fall on Monday anyways, but yeah, I guess it really depends on the industry you're working in. Most popular countries for international students. So Spain starts off the ranking with over 100,000 international students, and there's Germany with 300,000. Russia is also a pretty popular destination. I wonder what this is going to look like in the future, though. And then China with over half a million. I really wish we knew where these international students were coming from. Considering Australia only has like 25 million people living in it, this is a lot of international students. I mean, not even Japan is up that high. And finally, the big three, the UK, and then Canada, and the US. The US with over a million. Man, can I be an international student in some sort of tropical paradise? Does Fiji have any options for me? I'm gonna flunk out the first semester. Certain countries are growing faster than others as top destinations for international students, like Canada and Australia. Oh, and it seems like both these countries are mostly getting it from India and China. Strange that Spain's students' top country of origin is Italy. I feel like that's like an American student just going to Canada to study. Russia's getting most of their students from former Soviet states. And here's the top 15 countries of students coming to the US. I didn't expect to see Saudi Arabia number four. Maybe a good time to remind people that I dropped out of college twice. The most expensive sports. So easily the least expensive sport for a child to do is track and field. What if you're doing pole vaulting though? That would be expensive. Surprised to see basketball isn't like the lowest. Like for skateboarding, you gotta buy the skateboard. How expensive are these balls? How is tackle football not number one? That That's pretty expensive. All that equipment, some is provided, but not all of it. Soccer is more expensive than tackle. How is this happening? Volleyball? I don't get that either. That was all sports. This is on average how much it'll cost you. Swimming? What? I'm just, I'm just trying to think like the cap. How much are these parents spending? Oh, I guess you have to get access to a pool. Okay, never mind. Golf is just like a rich person thing anyways. I get that. Then there's the top three, field hockey, skiing slash snowboarding, and ice hockey. There seems to be a theme here. Like if it needs to be done in the cold, it's going to be expensive. Annual cost for one kid to do ice hockey is almost $2,600. Uh, and this is broken down into travel, equipment, lessons, registration, and camp. Seems like travel's the big one for hockey. Hold up, where's esports at? That would be number one, right? You need a good gaming rig. That's why I'm gonna make my kid just do parkour. I thought that was gonna be funnier. Let me let me see. Let me let me think about it if there's something else. I don't even know if people know what parkour is. I guess my future kid's only gonna be doing track. Mark all the states you consider cowboy states. The average number of states selected per person was 10.7. Wait, I kinda wanna do this myself. Now looking at this map, 10.7 seems like way too many. Texas is obviously a major cowboy state. Now I'm a Californian born in Alabama, and I don't really think I'd consider either one of those cowboy states. I think you gotta include Oklahoma for sure. I guess this really depends on your definition of a cowboy. According to anime, people from Japan would probably label all 50 states cowboy states. I'd say New Mexico as well, and maybe Kansas. Like when you think of cowboys, you think of the desert, and the deep south is, has a lot of vegetation. I'm sure there are cowboys. There's technically cowboys in California, just in way inner California. I'd definitely say Arizona as well. You know what? Utah would probably have some, maybe. I don't think this is asking, like, the states that have cowboys though. It's just saying what state do you label as a cowboy state? I don't even know if I feel uh, comfortable with Kansas anymore. I would probably pick those four for sure. And then I'm less confident about these, but I would still kind of want to label them. Wait, actually, I already want to take these back. Tennessee for the country music. It's got to be kind of a cowboy state. I just want to hardcore say it's really just Texas. Now, according to these Americans though, they do agree Texas is definitely the top one. 19 out of the 20 participants picked this state. What is the one person that didn't pick this state though. Kind of shocked that three people picked California. I mean, these people must be from California or inland California. Again, there are parts of California that would remind you of Texas. They're just not the parts you think about when you think of California. I think for the most part, my list agreed Oklahoma and New Mexico. They didn't really agree with my Arizona take though. I just think you have to have the desert in order to have a cowboy. See, Colorado's a little shocking me because it's just so cold, but of course I'm just thinking of Denver. The rest of Colorado is probably very cowboy. -y. Ah, Wyoming. So I was maybe, oh, well they are are called the Cowboys. I believe their university has like a cowboy, like a bucking bronco. I was wondering why I felt a weird need to include this state. I did want to stretch all the way up to the Dakotas for sure, and then now I, that I think about it, yeah, Montana should be included. Most people agree that the Deep South isn't necessarily cowboy country, but they do agree with my weird stretch from Arkansas to Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. It's, just, it's Nashville. Guarantee you if you go to concerts, there's gonna be cowboys everywhere. And then Kentucky, yeah, that's how they get the chicken.
American. For some reason, I felt like self-conscious with the states that I was choosing. I felt like, oh, this is maybe not right. But I probably should have leaned even more into it, and I think I would have got these exact answers. Okay, the one person that picked Washington is definitely the one person that didn't pick Texas. I'm thinking that one person is also the same person that picked, like, Michigan and Wisconsin. I'm sure they do have some cowboys. It's just they're frozen cowboys. Like, they're a weird Pokemon evolution. This is a really cool experiment. I like this. Nathan's hot dog eating contest. I think I've actually watched this before. You must eat the full hot dog and bun for it to count. It's an Independence Day sort of thing. It's actually insane how good people are at this. I like those water straps are the best when you like put the whole thing in your mouth and just like doused it with water. So in the early part of the contest, the US was dominating. They also weren't even getting close to eating 20 hot dogs. Although what am I talking about? That seems normal. Keep in mind, you only have 10 minutes to eat as much as possible. There was this random German man that won back in 1984, but the freedom had to live on. Then all of a sudden, the Japanese striked and they just completely dominated in the early 2000s. Dudes back at those times were eating 40 hot dogs in 10 minutes until 2007 when America took the crown and kept the crown for a decade and more. On average, these winners were eating 60 hot dogs in 10 minutes. What is the math on that? So they're eating six dogs every minute or one dog every 10 seconds. Did they not just like completely throw it all up right afterwards? This guy in 2021 almost ate 80. Ow, what? I wonder if this was the same dude or like maybe the same like one or two dudes from the Japanese winning categories. Give this man credit for whoever was there in 2001 though. He lifted that record to beyond like levels ever before and I'm guessing everyone that followed just kind of did maybe a similar strategy I don't know if he had a good strategy it was the water thing yeah this Japanese man will go down in history as the ultimate glizzy gobbler 1,000 babies are born every four minutes in the world so where will those babies be coming from obviously the biggest bubble on the map 172 of those babies coming just from India and 103 from China insanely only 30 of those babies will be born in the US even though technically we are currently the third biggest country by population and this is why we are going to be passed up by several countries, Nigeria probably being one of them. I actually thought Indonesia would be a bit more, because Indonesia is projected to pass us up as well. Japan is dealing with a lot of depopulation, but there's still got six on the map. And actually, Europe as a whole can only get to six or lower. Well, there's Russia at ten. Crazy that the massive continent of Australia, only two babies per four minutes. Egypt, Ethiopia, and the Congo, also pretty big in Africa. And if you break it down by continent, we have 106 in the Americas. 52 only in Europe, Africa's 326, and the big one, Asia. I'm also forgetting about other places like Pakistan, Bangladesh. Is there any country with zero babies that, like, they're almost at zero or less than one? I think pretty much everyone's just given at least one. Or maybe they're not labeled on the map. Declarations of war during WW1. And unsurprisingly, it is complicated. So a Serbian boy killed some Austrian archduke and then chaos ensued. I don't even know how I'm supposed to read this thing. This is so chaotic. Basically, you should see three standouts. That's Austria, Hungary, Germany, and the Ottomans getting most of the arrows pointed at them. It is interesting that some countries just declared on one specific part of the Central Powers. Like, most of Latin America was just focused on Germany. That's so crazy. None of these places declared war also on Austria, Hungary, or even the Ottomans for that matter. I had no idea. Then there's these five, which only declared war on Austria, Hungary, and Germany, not the Ottomans. Maybe they just kind of assumed, like, yeah, everyone in this, like, obviously we're gonna come after the Ottomans too. Maybe it just wasn't an official thing. Only Germany and Austria randomly declared war on Portugal? I don't even know how I'm able to read this thing. And the Ottomans declared war on Japan, but just the Ottomans from that faction. A lot of people declared on Bulgaria as well, but not everybody. And there's Serbia and Romania. Yeah, you might as well have just put this map instead. It would have been equally as understandable. Ah uh, yes, The Onion, the most trusted news source. They're not included on this map, but it's hilarious to think that the flags of Spain and Switzerland are just like right here in the corner. Probably hands up and everything. Their vision is based off movement. If we stand perfectly still, maybe they can't see us. I actually did not know World War One was this kind. I just thought everyone was just like, yeah, team one against team two, go, battle royale style. Fake accounts removed by Facebook. Blue Line is the yearly active users, so even though they were removing accounts, they were, it was still going up? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Already in December 2017, over half a billion were removed. But in the first quarter of 2019, two billion were removed. And from there, it just continued to be a lot larger than the other quarters. First quarter of 2022, they're still removing 1.5 billion accounts. Wait, what is going on? Something seems fishy. I have not logged into Facebook in like five years. Revenue of big tech companies is now larger than GDP of major nations. It does look like you're including all of the tech companies in one big area. So I guess it's a little bit misleading, but big tech is looking like it might pass up all of 
Brazil's economy. It's already passed up Australia, Spain, and Mexico. I mean, even though these are combined, it is still crazy that just these five corporations are passing up entire countries. Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, Google, and Apple. I wish it broke down like who has a mo- is it, is it Apple that has most of this? And then maybe Amazon? And where does it go from here? Is it only going to continue to go up? I guess time will tell. And big thanks to my patrons. Isaac, I guess. Australia's Susius, Chungus. Ashton Powers, Faja. Asusos, man. A uh, fat. My name is Joe Biden. I love fat being Joe Biden. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Cowboys 83. Bring back Poland. Barnsky W. Good old Raya. Drew's pet dog. Jakov. Bruni. Marco. Hendetta. 5610. Fresh animation. Rise. The Mexican Why am I doing this? And the Conqueror.